Heavenly Father, as your Holy Spirit invigorated the early church. We pray that that same spirit will continue to dedicate and inspire our Father Brooks and our beloved graduating seniors. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for bringing it on. Please be seated, but thank you for bringing it a little closer. <coughs> Welcome to this service of holy matrimony, <laughs> wherein the bride and groom light their troth of God's holy estate of marriage. Do you, Albert, James, Edward, Charles, Lewis, Francis, George? Oh wait, I'm sorry. Wait, that was yesterday. Oh, I'm so sorry. Where are the little boys? Ah, uh, gosh. You know what? It's 24 hours. Interesting service that, wasn't it? But I think this one's even a bit more interesting. Welcome, Happy Pentecost, 50 days after Easter, the great birthday of the church. As Emily was telling the children, something very interesting happened on that day. The disciples were gathered together. They've been meeting after they saw, the Bible tells us, Jesus risen and alive after he was executed. Most people know that part of the story. For about 50 days, they were seeing Jesus. This is before cell phones, Snapchat, Twitter, any of it. In different places, in different times, and they all saw exactly the same thing. Absolutely astounding. So um, Jesus leaves them. His mission is completed. The Gospel that I just read says he promised to send somebody to be with him. They're all together in the upper room, and boom! Chaos unleashes as Emily preached this morning. I mean, wind, flame, and something happened. Their lives were changed. The word that Jesus had promised them it's a fancy Greek word. We'll give you some words this morning for our graduates. We have to meet them in their expertise. The word is paraclete in Greek. It doesn't mean the Holy Spirit. That's the English translation. The word means the companion, the comforter, the defense attorney. Sometimes, for college students, it might mean the chaperone, the protector. <clears throat> this is God's dynamic presence right here and right now, and those disciples stop being discipline. The word means students. It's where we get the word discipline from. They stop being students. They start to be apostoloi in Greek. The word means sent out on a mission. Every one of the people, the men and women in that room, were executed for what they experienced and saw and heard. They stopped living ordinary lives. They started living very dramatic lives. There was a profound transition in that moment. And I cannot think of a better way to greet our graduating seniors than the Feast of Pentecost. I don't think we've ever had Pentecost coincide with Senior Sunday. And I'm so glad that it did. Because, um, seniors, you are not students anymore. You'll be college students, but that's different. I'm going to suggest that you're going to become apostles. Whether you're Jewish or Christian. Apostles, meaning you're sent out for the mission. You're about to commence. Have you seen that on your invitations? Have you seen your invitations? <laughs> Do you know you're having parties? I just want to make sure we're all good on this. Because when I show up, it's not because like I just crashed. I actually got an invitation. Uh, uh, so commencement exercise is what we call graduation. Did you know that? The word commencement 
is a very old word, and it's what they used originally to take people who trained to become, you may know this, rabbis and priests. There was a moment of initiation. It was a threshold moment. And you stopped living the lives you were living before, and you started living new and dramatic lives. You're not going to become priests or rabbis, but you are going to be different. To commence is to go together into a brand new life. That's why we do this service a week before graduation. Because it takes a little while to get your head around, I think, the enormity of what you're about to do, and we want to slow it down. Haven't you worked so long for this? Haven't you wondered what it's going to be like? And all of a sudden, boom, it's over. So we want to slow it down. We want to start now. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Let's talk about the world that you're leaving. Every single parent here called, was called to come here or chose to come here, and we have chosen to stay here so that you're not raised in New York City, or Chicago, or LA, or Miami, or anywhere, Washington, D.C., or Houston, or Dallas. We came here for a reason. And we stayed here for a reason. And we have worked our brains out for a reason. And that reason is to give you the very best foundation that we possibly could. We lived very different lives. We didn't have the internet. We actually didn't text our siblings. We just knocked them around. You see. We, 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 we had to learn how to uh, do things that maybe you all may not know how to do yet. I'll back a second. We chose to stay here to give you the best life you, you possibly could have. And we worked very hard to do for you to be safe, for you to excel in all the amazing things that you do. I want to tell you, friends, you're looking at one of the most athletically gifted groups of seniors that we have ever had. There are state champions. Do not run a race against this group. Do not ski and try and keep up with this group. It will not go well for you. We came here for you to do all of that and to be safe and to launch with the only thing we can give you now, which is our love. I've watched you all grow up, even when you didn't know, so I can say this. The one thing we've not been able to give you is our experience, because frankly, we don't want you to experience some of which we did. That's why we're here. <laughs> Ask your parents if they remember much about the next six months of their lives that you're about to live in, and see how honest they get. You see, we, we didn't want you to learn that way. We want you to launch. And the only thing we can't give you is the experience. Life's going to do that. I promise. You are amongst the most well-prepared group of seniors that we've ever had. That's the world you're leaving. It's a world that you might look back on, or maybe this week appreciate everything that God's given you, in your families and the people that love you, and what everyone's done. Uh, it's a group effort to get you on that stage. And you're here because we love you. And you're the most important, we're, we're prouder than you of everybody else, anything else in our world. You know that, don't you? It's true. May I say, for a second, reflect on the world that you're moving into. It's a world where I have serious doubts whether your children will have to learn how to drive a car. It's a world where you'll be able to push a button on your phone or perhaps right up here on the temple, and a drone will deliver anything you want to your world. It's a world in which you have access to more information than anybody in this room has ever had, or all of human history. And we
we don't quite know what to do with it all the time. It's a world in which statistically, as I read yesterday, it is safer to be deployed in the U.S. military in the field around the world. Statistically, it's safer to be in the military than it is to be a student at an American school so far in 2018. This is a world that we don't know all that much about. You're competing against people from all over the world. When you get to college, you're going to find out why it was so hard to get into the schools that you wanted to get into. It's because people are coming from all over the world and it's heads up competition. This is a world in which college presidents, five or six of the most uh, prestigious schools were recently interviewed, and they were asked about competencies that they would want high school students to bring to college. Does anybody know, like Stanford, Harvard, Yale, MIT, and these are the presidents? Anybody know what the president said they wanted you to know how to do? I said recently to our church, the president said they wanted you to know how to consume alcohol without hurting yourselves. They wanted you to know how to separate white from dark and clean your clothes and yourselves. They wanted you to know the difference between a debit card and a credit card. And I'll say parenthetically, maybe some people in the room want you to know how hard it is to have a dollar come towards you and how easy it is to lose it. They wanted you to have life skills. They're not worried about your academics. They're worried about you surviving. Has anybody here ever changed the time on a car? Yeah? Good. That's good. That's very good. Has anybody here seen something that we call a monthly debit card statement? <laughs> and has anybody here asked your parents what to do after reviewing the monthly credit card statement? Uh huh. Okay, that's right. <clears throat> and may I tell you that uh, when you get to college and it's around late October, that slight scent in the air is not coming from outside the dorm room. The kitchen and room service may be a little different when you go to college, just saying. You guys, you're up. It's your life. You're being sent out on a mission. I want to tell you that um, when you walk across that stage, I want you to feel all the love and all the support of people for you. And I want to tell you how excited we are to see you launch into the world in which you're launching. You're important in you matter. Your accomplishments are amazing. And it's only the beginning. We have some gifts for you this morning. Not the red balloons. Grant can have those after the service. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, here's what we have. Henry, yeah, you too. Uh, here's what we have for you. We have a Bible. It's a really nice Bible. I want you to take it. I had a, a, a young woman, nine years ago, uh, I gave her one of these Bibles. She brought it back to me. When I want to tell you that I know it's not on the internet and fancy. There's so much wisdom of thousands of years from the greatest people that ever lived for you in that book. The Holy Spirit's waiting for you in that book and in your life to companion Jesus and who he is and Moses and David and Abraham and Paul and all the great men and women are all in that book and they're waiting for you. We're going to give you a bookmark and uh, it's uh, Ms. Petrosky that, uh, that designed a beautiful thank you. Very nice of them. Um, we're going to give you a Starbucks card. <coughs> To, uh, we're not telling them how much is on it, right? Is it on it? Yeah, let's not tell them. Okay. Um, 
Here's my deal. If you bring me back that Starbucks card, I will refill it. I might even put more on it at Christmas. Thanksgiving. I've had two students in 23 years bring me back those cards. Who's going to be the third? <laughs> We're going to give you a little prayer. Um, uh, can I ask you, Rebecca, to hold this up? We're going to give you a little prayer shawl. It's a small prayer shawl. <laughs> Don't steal my narrative. <laughs> so we know you're not going to hang a big prayer shawl blanket in your dorm room. But we're giving those to you, the women that knit them, pray over uh, you and them. And we're giving them to you to remember who you are. You remember how much God loves you. On that bookmark is Rebecca Cotton's phone number, our youth minister, and my phone number. Do you know I've gotten calls in the middle of the night from students in college? And you know what? That's awesome. We're here for you all the time. That's why the phone numbers are on the book. And we're going to pray for you. I'm going to get you ready to walk across that stage. Emily apologized for standing you up. I'm not going to apologize at all because you guys are going to take it. Come on. <laughs> Would you stand up with me now? Come on right here. Uh, oh, over here. <laughs> oh my God, you guys, these are leaders. Like, uh, here, stand on the main level right here. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> And friends, you're seeing us, you're seeing us have our uh, confirmants, the next group. Can you see them coming? They're helping today. So, um, I'm just going to say a couple of nice things about every single one of our students. And our confirmants are going to effortlessly bring their gifts over. Um, hold on, uh, Patrick, where are you? Patrick, where are you, Patrick? Um, Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> Friends, um, let's see. I want you to meet who I think is listed first, Hallie Bradford. Hallie, would you step in? Meet my friend, Hallie Bradford. Now, I have uh, had the privilege of watching Hallie grow up uh, with her beautiful family who served the valley and our church in all kinds of amazing ways. Um, I want you to know that Hallie is graduating from Vail Christian. Um, I've just received permission, thank you, to tell you that Hallie is the uh, salutatorian and will be speaking, please, absolutely. <laughs> privilege to minister to. Hallie ice skates, and she has worked to become excellent. She won't tell you about gold medals. She won't tell you about her accolades. May I tell you, you're looking at one of the strongest young women I've had the privilege to minister to. Um, she is an amazing person. Um, she is a member of the Skating Club of Vail, National Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta. Uh, she's coached skating. She's going to CSU, and she's going to major in business. Um, but I want to say thank you for majoring in success. It's been such a privilege to know you and watch you grow up. And uh, uh, please, who has Hallie's gifts? Come on up. Give her that Bible, would you please? Hallie, I chose 2 Timothy for you. I highlighted it here. There's two different kinds of Bibles. Paul writes, and I'm thinking about the family. He writes, I thank God whom I serve with a clear conscience. As day and night I constantly remember you in my prayers, I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother and in your mother and father. And I am persuaded thou lives in you. For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. 
For God did not give us the spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. When I thought about you, I thought about that verse. Power, and love, and self-discipline. How it's been a pleasure. God bless you. And congratulations. get the cheat sheet for this next person, but I don't need to have a cheat sheet because I've had the privilege of watching Bell Carlson at Vail Christian High School for four years. Um, I need to tell you that Bell is a younger sister who has uh, met and exceeded her sisters in success. You're looking at the captain of the seven-time state champion dance team, 2A in Chassa state competition. By the way, they would have scored second or third in 3A and competed at 4A if they chose to. This young woman has never not been a state champion in four years of Bale Christian. You're also looking at a young woman that was part of an academic decathlon team that won the state competition and went to nationals to represent the state of Colorado. You're looking at a young woman. Okay, I'm sorry. She's telling me she just switched from naval architecture to civil engineering. My bad. <laughs> and Belle is going to attend Villanova in the fall. And I want to say, even though uh, not a full member of our church, what a pleasure to watch you grow. What a pleasure to watch you excel. And thank you for everything you've done. Who has Bell's gift? Oh, right. So, Bell, I chose this uh, right here. It is Psalm 27. Um, and it's down here. Hmm? Oh, it's coming in. Okay, there it is. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to Him in song. Um, I've watched you leap and spin and twirl and pirouette and dance and cheer and leap. You are truly this leader. Thank you. Come on. This is Anna. I want to tell you that Anna is a member of one of the funnest families I've had the privilege to know. Um, you certainly have to visit their house one day. If you haven't been out to the house, do make them a house call. Just make sure you have a good GPS and go out there. I want to tell you that I've rarely seen Anna without a smile on her face. What a beautiful young woman. What a pleasure to get to know. Um, I want to brag on Anna for just a second. Cross country and Nordic racing, golf, National Honor Society, best buddies. We're still getting there. 4 H. She works at Bearcat Stables in Cordillera. Top 10% of her class all four years of high school. Junior varsity captain of her cross country team, varsity and academic all state in Nordic and in golf, and she received her seal of biliteracy, Spanish and English. What did you do in high school? <laughs> <laughs> Anna's going to uh, attend Colorado State University. We have a lot of in staters this year. And she's majoring in pre-veterinary science and minoring in Spanish. Is that right? Wow. Who has Anna's gift? Well, of course. Okay. Now, I want to tell you and your family, uh, along with a few others here, to find kind of cool. You've got the cool meter going. And I, when I prayed for you, I chose a Romans, this verse. Paul wrote, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, 
to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and you will be able to know and approve what God's will is, His good, perfect, and pleasing will. Um, my prayer for you is never to conform, always to be transformed, and to know what God's will is. Because when you know other people that you follow, and you can bring them, what a pleasure.
He mentioned his family. And I'm very touched by that. So Brandon, I want to say, I'm looking forward to getting to know you as you go forward. And we're very proud of you. And I want to say, uh, what a privilege it is to get to know you and your brother. I can't wait to see what God has for you. Who has Brandon's gift? But would you open that up? Full ride. Full ride. Thank you. Okay. When I prayed for you, all I got, Brandon, was strong. All I got was so things. So I went to where the Bible talks about strength. Colossians. Paul wrote this letter. And he says to the Colossians, So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, I'm thinking about your beautiful. Continue to live in Him, rooted and grounded in Him, strengthened in the faith in which you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. When I pray for you, I've got rooted and strong. And I think God has a gift for you to give to others through your strength. Brandon, what a privilege. Congratulations.
Cole is not the loudest person in the room. He might be like his daddy in that regard. But there's a whole world inside this young man. I actually was not far off the birth of this young man. And I've had the privilege to watch him grow uh, over the years. Now, Cole's graduating from Battle Mountain. He attend, he's going to attend Montana State University. And he's going to study in that, oh, we got a woo-hoo in the back there. Uh, he's going to study in the film and photography school, which is a, such a cool emerging field. Um, activities for Cole, soccer, technology, student association, track and field, alpine ski team, and Cole has worked, and I respect that, through high school. He's worked at Marco's, he's worked at the Wetbeard Field House, and Groring's Brewery. Can you imagine the stories that uh, Cole can tell about your family and friends working in those places? Um, what are some of his proudest high school accomplishments? Uh, this might be a little parental help here. Uh, top 10% of his freshman class, video production, and uh, freestyle skiing. And this man can uh, tame a trampoline. Sometimes the trampoline uh, uh, kicks back but amazing on a trampoline. And he also uh, volunteered for the Eagle County uh, rummage sale for how many years? Yeah, three summers. So um, the Mowers have been a key family in our church. And what a privilege to watch a young man like Cole grow up. And I am so excited to see what God has in store for you. Uh, who, uh, let's see, who has the, okay. <laughs> So Cole, I've given you my Bible verse. This is the verse that I was given when I graduated from high school. It's Nehemiah as a prophet in the Hebrew Bible, and he says, "Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drink, and send uh, send some to those who don't have anything to eat. This day is an important day, sacred to the Lord. Never grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength." Cole, I want you to experience joy. I want you to go after us. I want you to go get it. Nehemiah was a tremendous man. Read the rest of his book. And uh, he didn't talk a lot. He acted and he changed the world. I want you to act and change the world. What a privilege to you. God bless you. Thank you. Where's Maddie? Maddie McDougal. Okay. <laughs> Now, I have to tell you that uh, I met Maddie when she was a chest of drawers. <laughs> Did anybody attend the Battle Mountain? Wonderful spring court uh, show. What's the name of your character? Madame de la Grande Bouche. Madame de la Grande Bouche. Okay. And she rocked the house. I didn't realize that I've been getting to know Maddie's mother, Mary, who worships at our 8 o'clock service. When I realized that Mary worshiped our service, I said, I want Madame here today. <laughs> so, um, uh, Maddie, uh, thank you. And I did, I, I have some knowledge of theater daughters. I've got that. So let me tell you about Maddie for just a second. Section leader in the Altitude Choir and the Chamber Wind Ensemble at Battle Mountain. Tennis at the VMS. The Battle Mountain Players Spilled Ink. What's that? It's our arts publication. It happens once every year. Okay. Yeah. And National Honor Society, of course. <laughs> what are some of her uh, high school accomplishments? Earn an award for an outstanding musician. <laughs> Top 20% of her class. Fairy May and the Curious Savage and Madame de la Grande Bouche in Beauty and the Beast and becoming a part of Battle Mountain's Chamber Wind Ensemble. Um, Maddie is going to attend the University of Washington in Seattle. And uh, what are you going to major in? English. English. Thank God. Good. We need English in this world. So friends, um, I haven't had a chance to get to, Ma to know Maddie all that much, uh, but I still want to say uh, any theater player is always welcome here. I love your mom. And we, we're going to wish you every blessing. And uh, who has a gift for, oh, of course.
So, I chose a psalm for you, because there's lots of music in the psalms. Psalm 149, let Israel rejoice in their maker, let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let him praise his name with dancing and make music to him with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people, he crowns the humble with salvation, the saints rejoice and sing for joy. And I hope you continue to rejoice and sing for joy. And go help us with English, please, because the world needs it so badly. Thank you and congratulations. Okay, I think next one's Alex Reichardt, but she, where, where was Alex? She, where's Alex? Did you may see? Where's, oh, she's here. Um, I, I'm just going to do this. Uh, if you know Alex at all, the only view you're going to see of Alex is this one. Because that's the only view people see of Alex. Because she's going to pass you. Uh, because Alex is one of the best athletes ever associated with our church. Now, her younger sister is such a theater performer, you might not have seen Alex uh, up on stage, but I've seen Alex grow up so quiet and so humble. Let's get rid of that for just a second. Um, she's a graduating Battle Mountain. Um, she wrote next year, she's just going to be running for the Colorado School of Mines. <laughs> and she's just going to be studying, is this still right? Chemical engineering. That's all. Um, so I want you to tell us your running achievements because I don't want to mess it up. I want to make sure. Would you please? Um. My team was first for state in cross country the last two years, and then we went to nationals this past year and got third, and... Nationals! <laughs> Tucker brings cool into a room. 
Show me a, a, a man that doesn't stand up straight when he talks to Tucker. I'm doing it right now. Um, the older Tucker has gotten, to me at least, the less words, but he's got that James Dean kind of thing. Can you see it? Those of you that know it, he's got that kind of, so I've fallen into a very simple vocabulary with Tucker when I see him. Hey. You good? You know? And look at the smile. I mean, the guy, seriously, there's, this, this is a, all of our guys are total package, and Tucker is no exception. Um, now, let's see. Um, I want to tell you that uh, I've had the privilege of watching Tucker grow up. He's got two of the coolest parents on the planet. Um, Tucker has a dual heritage, Jewish and Christian. And I think that is a tremendous strength, as several others do here, too. Um, let me tell you about Tucker. Vail uh, Ski and Snowboard Academy, he's putting off school. He's going to take a postgraduate year to work on a ski racing. Argentina? Is that right? Okay. And uh, he is going to be focusing on lowering his point total. Do I have this right? Okay. And what's on the other side of that, Tucker? Tell me what 